Welcome to our show, Umbrellas of Hope. We are committed to enrich the life of members of the veteran and military community by connecting them to the resources that they need. We advocate for professional and entrepreneurial opportunities and facilitate conversations of hope, empowerment, and creativity. To reduce military and civilian transition difficulties and to help our veteran and entrepreneurs' families to strive. Hi, I'm Yorka, your host. We invite you to be part of this journey as we, together, bring a positive change on new beginnings, opportunity, and success. Our new mini series will be introducing the art of business to share with you how it can enhance your life, your community, and your future. So stay tuned. <laughs> keyword to the stage. He's here to talk to us about the R or time. Hmm. That thing that we can seem to get enough of. Do you ever struggle with time? Do you ever wish that instead of 24 hours we had 48 hours or 76 hours? Well, Keys, he's an Air Force veteran, a realtor, and the founder and host of Butter Butter Podcast. So he's wearing a lot of hats. So he has learned how to manage his time very effectively. So he's here to talk to us about it and how to practice on how to make our time more effective. So stay tuned. Time. We all have the same 24 hours in a day. And if your schedule is like mine and millions of other people around this country and around this world, your schedule is crazy hectic. You gotta, maybe you have a spouse, maybe you have kids, maybe it's just you. But between work and extracurricular activities, sleep, going to the gym, whatever it is that you do, managing that time is difficult. It's difficult for a lot of people. I talk to people all the time who are just like, look, if the one thing I could get fixed is managing my time better, I'll be more productive. And productivity in life, whether you're in business or not, productivity can turn into money. It can turn into revenue, especially if you're in business. So, you know, how do you how do you manage that? How do you fix that? Well, I'll tell you, it takes a lot of reflection. It takes a lot of deep reflection and honest conversation with yourself. You need to look at what you're doing, what you haven't done, what you need to do, in order to optimize your calendar, right? So that you can stay on top of time, right? Because there is an art to it. And I'm not sitting here to say I've figured it all out because I definitely have not figured it all out. But there are things that I have figured out over the last couple of years that really help. Uh, I have a lot of people come up to me. They've come up to my wife and they say, how on earth does, does Keith do all of this stuff? And the short answer is I'm very particular about my calendar. It, very particular. Now, I've got a list of 10 things here that are definitely going to help somebody. Some of these may help you. Uh, all of these may help you. They may help friends. So make sure that you share this information, right? Yeah. So all your friends and family can help optimize their, their calendars. But first and foremost, you have to find the right system for you. Maybe that is a an old-fashioned agenda book. Maybe it's Google Calendar. That's what I personally use. Maybe it's something in a CRM system. But you got to find whatever system works for you in your life and whatever crazy hectic stuff is going on in your life. 
Uh, I use Google because I'm married. I've got two kids uh, to kind of manage my work, my wife's work, you know, anywhere my kids might end up being, um, all those personal activities that you do, you know, those kind of things. Throw all of those in the calendar, right? That way you know where everybody's at at any given point in time. And for us, Google works perfect because we all have Google accounts. So it all kind of syncs up together. Now, another thing you can do is time block. Time blocking is absolutely huge for me. Uh, I will assess what particular task or appointment is going to take, right? I, I'm a realtor by trade, so showing a house, the typical appointment time is like an hour. So if I'm showing three houses uh, and I've got them set 30 minutes apart because they're close in proximity, whatever, you know, I, I just judge off the situation and I might say, okay, about an hour and a half to see these houses, maybe two hours. Um, a lot of times I'll actually throw a little bit of extra time on there just for some buffer, which really helps because I'd much rather sit in my car for 10 minutes between appointments rather than running late. Um, but just blocking that time, knowing how long things take and putting it in your schedule and living through your schedule, whatever's in your schedule, that's what gets done, right? Another thing you can do, and this is where it's helpful for us. And this is why Google is beautiful for this is color coordinating, right? Personal events in my calendar are green work events are blue. If it's a work event, like a showing or a listing appointment or something where I'm meeting a client, I put it in red. Right, because I do not want to miss those. It, I want it to stand out, and I want to know that I cannot shift those around. Right, those appointments are not going to change at all without the client's approval. So, color coordinate. Right, my wife's appointments are purple. Uh, my podcast that I run, anything I'm doing with video recording is yellow. Right, once again, it stands out. It's visual. I know that if I see yellow in the schedule, that I need to be right here at my desk. And I'm going to be meeting somebody on camera to record a podcast episode. So I can just quick glance, know where I'm supposed to be and where everybody else is. Another thing that I do that's really ties into these is I do a daily and weekly review. Now, this one to me is huge. This is like a game changing thing for me is I will look two weeks in advance and I will say, what do I need to accomplish this week? What are my goals? Right. What are the four, five, six, ten different things that I want to get accomplished this week for my business, for my podcast, personally, whatever. And I will start going back to the time block and say, this should take half an hour. This will take an hour. Uh, do I need drive time built in, right? A little gap between those. So start throwing those into the calendar in different time blocks. That way, all of my goals are addressed with at least some time to get them done. Now, Maybe it's not enough time to get it done. Maybe as I start prioritizing these and I say, uh, my social media management, right? Let's just say I'm, I'm going to do three hours. I want three hours worth of time to work on this. But if I can get two done this week and then I can throw it on the schedule for next week for one hour, I'm still accomplishing the same thing as long as you know, it works for, for what I need for my business. And so that's why I look two weeks out. Almost set in stone for this week, very loosely kind of planned for the next week. So at the end of this week, when I'm planning for next week, guess what? Whatever hasn't been got hasn't gotten done or whatever was kind of loosely put in there for next week, I kind of solidify those. And then look at the goals for that week and do the same thing for the next week. So it just kind of keeps me a couple of weeks in, uh, up to date. But the other thing I do is every day I will look at my calendar for not only the next day, but the next couple of days, usually the next two or three days. And I'll look at those things uh, because in my business, sometimes somebody will call and say, look, I want to, you know, I want to meet and see a house or I want to list my house. Right. And I know that this is going to be an hour or two appointment and I can look at my calendar and now it's already time blocked out. It already looks on paper like my day is busy, but I can also look at it very quickly because it's color coordinated and I can see that, you know what, I can shift this to later in the day where there's no time block, right, to meet that client's needs. I can shift it to tomorrow, maybe two days from today, whatever. So you can shift those things around and play with it and make it work. Um, another thing that's that's important, and this is where I've actually struggled for, for quite a while, and, um, and I'll tell you here in a minute how I do it, but scheduling quality of lifetime. 
Now this, this, this is huge. We all need to take a break. We can't be at our desks for 20, you know, 24 hours a day, right? You got to sleep at some time. You got to eat, you got to go to the bathroom, right? So you got to schedule quality of lifetime. You have to schedule around those events. Um, one thing for me, lunch, I schedule an hour lunch. Uh, I'm self-employed, uh, but it gets me out of my office, gets me away from my screen for a little bit, uh, gets me to go upstairs, walk around. It's it's a break in the middle of the day. Um, it works great for that. Uh, but quality of life could be that hour. It could be taking a day off next week. It could be taking a weekend off, like a weekend trip with your loved ones. It could be a vacation, right? No matter what it is, you need to schedule that quality of life. Put it in your calendar. Now, What's worked for me on that is saying, uh, telling clients that, you know, I work basically 8 a.m. to 8, 8 p.m., uh, but at 6 p.m., I'm trying to shut down and step away from my computer. You know, I will try to return calls. Um, you know, I'm generally available up till 8 p.m. After that, your your messages are going to have to wait till the next day. I will return that the next day. I'm not going to go down to my office and return an email and ask, answering um a question about something that's not, you know, not time sensitive at 11 p.m. I'm just not going to do it. That can wait for the next day. Uh, because at that point in time, I want to try and spend time with my family. You know, we got to cook dinner, got to get the kids ready for bed, watch some TV, hang out with my hang out with my wife. Uh, weekends, same thing. Got to try and be done 5, 6 p.m. Um, where I am out of work mode, but still available for phone calls for a couple of hours. Um, but at some point in time, there's a hard stop. And for me, it's eight o'clock. Unless we're negotiating something or something is an emergency, it's going to get a return message the next day, right? That that saves that energy and that focus for my family and loved ones the best that I can. Now, it doesn't work all the time. Sometimes you do have things that that push you way beyond that. You know, just, just the other day, I mean, I was working in my office till 11 o'clock at night because I had things that needed to get done. They were time sensitive. Uh, the other thing is is social media. Uh, man, you need to get a handle on social media. You need to shut down Facebook on your computer. You need to keep your phone away from you when you're working. You need to get off of social media as much as you can. This is personally and professionally, right? Limit your usage and shift your mindset to realize that social media is a great tool for business, something that you kind of have to have. But don't go down that rabbit hole of three hours on TikTok, right? That's three hours you're never going to get back. May have been a ton of great videos. May have had a ton of laughs. But that's a rabbit hole that you that you can't come back from. Now, if, if you're using it in a creative way for your business or whatever you do, that's fine. That's productive time. So just be very cautious on your social media time, right? And shift that focus a little bit. And ask yourself, and this is where that reflection comes in, is the time I'm putting into this effective or not, right? It's one thing to be on social media, especially if you're in a business. Are you engaging with people? If you're just on there scrolling continuously and you're not engaging with anybody, you're not really doing anything other than uh, altering the algorithm maybe a little bit. But uh, the, the next thing that you can do, literally learned this one not too long ago, and this should stick in everybody's mind that no is a full sentence. Learn to say no. Once again, reflection, right? You need to know, do I have too much on my plate? Is what I'm being asked to do too much? Do I need to say no to it? If it's not going to bring you any joy or, or anything positive, if it's going to add extra stress in your life or your spouse's life, or it's something that is going to add stress to your to your work team, your work environment, or that you're not going to really be able to put the time and energy it really needs to get done, then just say no. You don't have the bandwidth for it. Just plain and simple. Learn to say no. It's hard. I, I, I have been very guilty of this one as a yes man uh, in a lot of ways, where I will step up and volunteer for things, and then it gets to be too much. Very difficult lesson to learn. Still working on that one. This is probably the one that that everybody probably struggles with. But just say no. Um, another thing you need to do 
if it hasn't been abundantly clear at this point yet, is communicate with your family, friends, and your team. Uh, like I just mentioned a couple nights ago, I had to work till like 11 o'clock at night. Um, I had to have that conversation with my wife. I said, look, I'm not, I'm not going to be up here to watch TV tonight. I've got this project and that project that I need to get wrapped up. I, these need to get done because looking at my schedule the next day, there wasn't time for it. I have other time sensitive things for those next couple of days that have just got to get done. I can't shift these around. So sometimes that happens and it's fine. But if you're effectively communicating with your loved ones and your team and letting them know when what you can and can't do, uh, that'll make your management of your time way easier. Last two things are kind of optimizing. Uh, one of which is your work environment. And that is making sure that maybe your phone is on, on mute. If you have something that really needs your attention, put it on mute, put it an arm's length away, do whatever you got to do, shut it off maybe, put it on, do not disturb, whatever. Um, keep your desk area clean. You know, make sure the lights are on. It's a warm, welcoming environment. If you're in an office and people distract you, shut and lock the door. If you can't stand too much noise, make sure the TVs are off, radios are off. If you're the kind of person that needs that background noise, make sure it's on. You know, vice versa, right? You know, figure out what works for you and, and allows you to work to your best potential. Uh, that way, you're taking all of these other things. And when you've got that hour to focus on something, you're 100% in. Nothing is going to distract you. And that allows you to be as effective as you can with that hour of time. The last thing, and the, and the one thing that you're probably not really thinking of is, is optimize your, your technology and your operating system. Our phones can get over overburdened. I, I haven't had it happen for a while, but you know, sometimes when your phone's got too much stuff going on, it starts getting hot. You know, you can feel it through the phone case. Um, and it has to go down into a cool down mode uh, or you know, you got too many web browsers up, the internet's slow, maybe the internet goes out. Of course, that's sometimes out of your control. But, and I, you know, virus issues on your computer, slowing it down, too many files, uh, too much stuff on your hard drive, and it just slows down and sluggish. And it takes you an hour to do what should be a 20 minute task. You got a problem, right? Clean that up. If you get all that cleaned up and operating smoothly, then you should be fine. Um, because that's kind of a compound effect, right? If it takes you an extra 30, 40 minutes to do that task today and you don't do anything about cleaning up that computer system, that same task you do tomorrow is going to take another 30, 40 minutes. And before you know it, that's going to be a lot of time that's going to get racked up. That's going to be wasted of you sitting here trying to pull your hair out of your computer. So with that, that's the, the 10 different tips and tricks that I've learned over the years to keep myself operating as smoothly as I can. But it's important to remember that there's an art to this. And uh, just like all artists, you, you have to you have to work on your craft. You have to continually work on it. You have to realize that you're never going to be perfect at it. Keep improving. Keep going back. And once again, reflection. Go back and reflect on what you're doing well and what you're not doing so well at. And that way you can make the improvements that you need. And... Uh, Wow, 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 wow. We're running out of time, are we? Or do you actually learn something about all the stuff that Keith uh, shared with us and how to make your time management a lot more effective? You know, we all only have 24 hours through the days. So what we do with those hours, it matters on how much stuff can we accomplish? Because technically we don't really have 24 hours. 
because you have to sleep, you have to eat, you have to spend time with your family, you have to drive to work, you have to pick up the kids, you have kids. So all that stuff take time. So maybe we're lucky we get up, we have like maybe six, eight hours of productive time. What do we want to accomplish on those eight hours? Do we have to get up a little bit earlier, go to bed a little bit later, watch less TV, sacrifice some things in order to have more? Because I'm sure the only thing that we don't want to do is run out of time. So let me know, what did you learn? What are you putting in practice today? And share it, Umbrella Soho. I can't wait to hear it. show up every day. Over the next few minutes, I'm going to take the time and I'm going to share three tips with you for you to consider, for you to implement in your life. But before I do, I want to share two quotes with you from two of my mentors whom I love dearly and one being none other than the great Les Brown. Yes, Les Brown always starts his talks and he says, I say this to impress upon you, not to impress you. That is important because when you hear me talk or when you hear someone walk in the room and I say, I am queen, Kimmy with an IE, I want you to feel like you are a queen too. I want you to feel like, hey, Queen Kimmy is sharing things that I can use in my own life. She's not sharing these things because she wants to impress me. She wants to impress upon me things in my own life that needs to have a light shine on them so that I can be aware of them and I can decide if I want to keep them or if I want to change them. So you have and will continue to enjoy this journey in creativity with us. In today's world, where artificial intelligence, the internet of things, advancing science, and autonomous vehicles is a new normal. Creativity has never been more important. This new mini series of Umbrellas of Hope was created in order to inspire you and empower you by giving you the creative confidence to redesign the world around you, to create new solutions that are invaluable for today's society, powered by your vision, your, your own unique talents, and limited only by your imagination. A world or society or future needs you.